Uh, the first set up here, this is called the SAR, the search and rescue set. Uh, it uses a half gallon uh, gas tank. This runs on straight gasoline, 87 octane. Uh, the one thing you want to make sure of is when you start to run these torches, uh, it's a good idea not to keep gasoline in the cans itself when you keep them on the trucks because it's got to be fresh, like fresh out of the pump. It can't be any more than like two or three months old because the gas starts to go bad. You're not getting a good flame. You won't get enough heat out of your torch. So um, when you get these storm empty, you always have gasoline on your truck. It's fairly fresh just from running saws and doing whatever. Make sure you're using fresh gas. Um, if you want to come over here on the gas bottle itself, we're going to use this big one. Both of these are the same. It's just the capacity that's different. All right, this is two and a half gallons. That's a half gallon bottle right there. Um, the part, pieces and parts of the tank we've got here, this is the pressure gauge. It's going to tell you what pressure this gas is under underneath in this container. This is the fill port. This is where you fill the gas. This is the valve that you pressurize the tank with, and this is your gas valve itself. Now, inside this valve, there's a little steel ball. It's a check valve, so if this thing gets knocked over, that bulb's going to come up. It's kind of like the ball in a shop vac. You know what I'm talking about? When you knock over your shop vac, that ball sucks up in there. you got to shut it off. Bang, bang it on the ground. This tank, either bang it on the ground or take a wrench or something and just tap real lightly on the top of this um, valve, and that will reset that check valve bulb. When you go to fill these tanks, where you want to fill it is about right up to where this weld is on the side of the tank. You've got to leave a little bit of air space so you can pump air to it and get the pressurization. Now when you go to set your set, your a Petrogen setup up, all you really need to do is know what tip you have in your torch and everything you, you need to know is right here on this um, chart on the side of the tank. All right. Now we're running number 83 tips in both of these torches the set today, so the setup's going to be exactly the same. Come down to your chart and you can see where it says number 3 and 83. That's the same tip, it's just two different ways they call it. Go to the number 83 tip, gasoline pounds, we know we need to pump this tank up between 10 and 20 pounds. So you come to your gauge, you pump this tank up so it's between 10 and 20 pounds. All right. So you're pretty much done with the tank right here, except for when we go and, and we start we turn this valve on. And when you turn the valve on, you have to turn it on nice and easy, get about a half turn, wait about 30 seconds. All right. That's going to pretty much purge the system nice and slow, and then slowly crank it on full. All right. Turn it all the way on. That should get the gas from here to your torch head. Next thing we want to look at on the chart is our oxygen pressures. It's telling us we need to be running between 40 and 60 pounds of oxygen. So we'll come up to our oxygen bottle. On your regulator, <clears throat> the oxygen regulator is different than the regulator that you're going to have for your acetylene, what we talked over there. All right. The main differences are is this gauge is going to be different. It's going to have different readings on it. Acetylene bottle only goes up to 30 pounds with 15, red lines at 15. This one, of course, goes up to 200. All right. It works just like any other regulator. You spin it out, it's going to reduce the pressure. You spin it in, it's going to in increase the pressure. This gauge here tells you how much oxygen is in your bottle. This is your regulated pressure. The fitting on here, this is a uh, right hand thread female fitting, goes on the oxygen bottle. We're going to take this, we're going to dial our regulator up until it's right at 40. Once we're at 40, we are ready to go. We've got our tank ready, we've got our oxygen ready. As far as threading, all fuel hoses on any torch outfit you come up with should be red and they should have left hand threads. All right, so you cannot put them on the oxygen side. All oxygen hoses should be green and have right hand threads or regular threads. So you can't mess it up. You can't put the oxygen hose on the fuel, you can't put the fuel on the oxygen. They pretty much make it fireman and construction worker proof. All right, let's get over to a petrogen torch over here. If you look at the tip itself, it's got a center orifice. That's where your blow-by oxygen will come through, or your cutting oxygen, and then all the little hole, the little orifices around it is where your actual flame comes out, okay? Following the torch body down, this is your blow-by oxygen valve. That's when you start your cut, that's what gives you the, introduces the oxygen, and increases the flame, the flame uh, uh, temperature, and blows all that slag out of your way. This is your oxygen mixing valve. This is where you're going to adjust your oxygen into your flame. Down here on the bottom, you've got your green hose, goes in the side marked oxy. You've got your red hose, goes in the side marked gas. This is your fuel mixing valve. This is what brings the fuel from here up through the torch head. All right. The startup procedure for a petrogen torch is a little bit different than you're used to on an oxygen acetylene. If you've used those throughout your career or life, you know how to start those up. This is a little, little bit different. When you start these up, the first thing you do is you crack your oxygen. 
just to get a little bit of oxygen flow going. Then you crack your fuel valve. Once you see just a light mist of fuel coming out of your torch head right there, she's ready to light. Okay? Then we dial our fuel up. Don't worry about that dripping gas, that'll go away. Then we dial our oxygen in. This is the flame we're looking for. This is that neutral flame I was talking about in class. You can see the inner cone is about an eighth to a quarter inch, and it doesn't have any yellow or anything coming out the end of it. Nice short flame. When you introduce your blow by oxygen, that inner flame should stay the same. See how it's staying the same? It's not getting longer, it's not getting shorter. It's staying exactly the same. We've got our flame set. When we start our cut, with Texas, it is different than you do with oxygen acetylene. You come to the end of your workpiece, you put the tip right on the metal. You have to preheat this tip. About a 45 degree angle, you just want to heat up this edge. As soon as it starts to bubble, you introduce your oxygen 90 degrees, a quarter inch off the steel, and you start your cut. If you look at my cut, when you've got a good flame, good cut speed, and good distance, it almost looks like you cut it with a saw. Alright? There's not a bunch of slag leaking down. It's not messy. It looks real nice and neat. Okay? Now, if we go to do a pierce cut, that's if we want to make a hole like with some rigging, you do the exact same thing, only you've got to preheat it in the middle of the metal. You want a pretty hot flame to do this because there's a lot of surface area that you've got to preheat. Same thing, quarter inch, nine degrees of work feet. Start working it out. When we get done, it's gonna look like you're gonna throw it into the drill bit if you've got a good cut there. Alright? When you go to try to pass the torch down, it's opposite of what you do on an oxygen assembly. Alright? On oxygen assembly, you set oxygen down and then fuel. On these, you shut your fuel down, then your oxygen. Alright?